Hey, welcome back to Die Cash Cars. So today we're going to be talking about the five rules for trading Hot Wheels. So as I alluded to in my last video, I talked about a trade for this guy right here. This is the Lamborghini Ascenza from the Exotic Envies 2. However, this is the chase car for that set. And what I traded for this car, traded away my long searched after Nissan Skyline 2000 GTX that I found on the pegs. It definitely pained me to do that, but when I looked at the values of these cars and just the overall which car would I rather have, when the opportunity came up, I had to take it. I had to pick up this Ascenza. I mean, this thing is pretty gorgeous. I know I've said that the premium chase cars do look kind of dull because they are just that enamel black color, but this one really stands out, looks really sinister, and maybe it's the full approach that Hot Wheels took with this, the whole card art, the skyline city in the background, I mean it just really looks good guys, so had to add this one to the collection, even if it meant sacrificing a skyline super treasure hunt. So from a retail value standpoint, you could say that I did pretty good, I traded a $1 super treasure hunt for a $6 premium car. However, from a secondary market standpoint, both cars at the time of the trade, which is about a week and a half ago, both were selling for around that $100 range. The market has since changed. So right now, the Ascenza Premium Chase is selling for still around that $100 mark, maybe even a little less. But the 2000 GTX Super Treasure Hunt is clearly well below the $100 mark now. It's hitting that $85 range right around where I projected that super would go. But that leads me into my first rule when it comes to trading Hot Wheels is you have to know and understand the secondary market value of your cars. I know a lot of folks like to frown on the idea of tagging your cars and the cars within your collection to a certain dollar value. but it comes in handy when you're dealing with a situation like this where you're trading cars that aren't necessarily likes, right? So you're not trading supers for supers and mainlines for mainlines. When you're trading in between those variants, uh, premium chase for a super treasure hunt, you got to look at those secondary market values in order to make sure that between you and the other collector, you're trading at an equal value. The second thing you'll want to do is make sure to put a reference check out there for yourself as well as the person you are going to be trading with. So the last thing anybody wants is to get scammed out of a valuable Hot Wheel that they're looking to trade off. So the easiest way to do this is to do it right within the forum or the Facebook page or the Instagram post. Just put a quick post out there soliciting for some feedback on trades that you've done in the past and likewise for the person that you're going to be trading with. My personal go-to is all diecast reference on Facebook so check out that page I will leave a link in the description below but great group of folks great admin who take hot wheel trade scams very seriously there is also an attachment on that page of a good traders list so make sure you do what it takes to get on that list so that you can have some hassle-free trades in the future. The third thing is you want to make sure that you are packaging the car that you're shipping out within the trade safely so that it doesn't get damaged, right? So my rule of thumb when it comes to packaging cars up is that I always put painter's tape on the front and the back end of the blister just like this. You don't need an excessive amount or anything like that just two little strips here front and back just to help the blisters stay intact because the car does like to shift back and forth when it's in the box um, that's the other thing too is that you will want to make sure that you are shipping within a box and not a paper bag and you'll want to use a lot of bubble wrap too just to make sure that it absorbs any kind of impact on the road another rule of thumb is that if you are shipping a higher end car like a super treasure hunt or in this case a premium chase you'll just want to make sure that you're using a protector pack to keep the card and the blister in as best condition as possible always put it inside prior to putting it in the box. I follow this very closely 
I always have a stash of protectors set aside just for trades or when I go about selling cars. Then the next thing is that you will want to coordinate and ship your item at the same time that the other person is shipping their item to you. You'll want to make sure that you try to do it within the same time frame. You know, you would hate for one person to ship today and the next person to ship next week, right? So you want to ship at roughly the same time so you both receive the cars at the same time. You can inspect the cars around that same time, right? And that way you can communicate if there are any issues. And within this process, how you prove that you shipped it, you got to provide that tracking number. You're going to want to ship at a rate that will give you that tracking number so that you as well as the other person can follow those shipments and know when they're going to receive them. And the last step in the trading process, step number five, is to leave feedback on the fellow collector that you worked out this deal with, whether it's on the Facebook page or the Instagram post that you found the deal or that you made the deal with this other party. You could also go to the All Diecast Reference page. Again, a great page, a great resource for just knowing and getting to know all the different hot wheel collectors out there leave that feedback give that vouch for them so that they can continue making those trades and that other folks feel comfortable making those trades with them or on the flip side of it if it turned out to be not so great of an experience let us know so that we know to avoid certain individuals and avoid being scammed or getting cars that are completely damaged or smashed or get lost in the mail it's just good etiquette to get that communication out there to the broader community so that we can avoid unfortunate situations with individuals who don't take trading Hot Wheels very seriously. So that's what I got for you guys today. Just wanted to give you my two cents on trading Hot Wheels. It's a great part of the hobby. I recommend it to you, but there's just some precautions and some steps that you'll want to take to make sure that your trades are successful like subscribe make sure you check out my upcoming videos there's a little bit of a foreshadow of what's to come it's gonna be a good one so make sure you stay tuned in to die cash cars and i will see you guys next time